Welcome to Order Military Radio TV, and we're live on Catholics. And we do it is all for free, and for the love of Jesus Christ, and for our Holy Mother, the Church. And we'll defend our Holy Mother, the Church. Today we come back to Adam Lavore's uh, complicity with evil. The United Nations in the Age of Modern Genocide. And please get this book. It's linked on the show page. And also you can get, uh, if you sign up for a free account at internetarchive.org, you can uh, rent this book and read it for free as well. So, and we are in the midst of another modern genocide in the Republic of Artsakh. And our day three show is up already. And Brother Alexis will be sharing it as we speak. And so I thought I would do our show five, safe area show two. And uh, you get this out as quick as possible to be right on top of it. It should not be a too long of a program today, folks. Not too much of information, but okay, so. As the war continued, France dispatched 6,000 troops, Britain more than 3,000, London and Paris deployed substantial contingents, not because they wanted to go to war with the Serbs, but precisely because they did not. The troops were the perfect alibi for not taking more robust action against the Serbs. Their presence allowed London and Paris to exert substantial influence over and control of the UN operation in Bosnia. Having troops on the ground was a substantial political currency says a former UN pro board official. My bosses were under no illusions that we had to give special attention to the British and French force commanders. This did not happen, said, so um, it was not the DPKO's decision to send the UN uh, protection force to Bosnia and uh, but it was its uh, responsibility to give its adequate guidance and backup for peacekeepers in the field but the UN but the commanders on the ground say this this did not happen says a former US Army liaison officer with U UN Pro 4 UN Pro 4's chain of command under which Sarajevo reported to Zagreb, and Zagreb reported to the secretary in New York, was slow and unwieldy. The DPKO was not properly staffed in the evenings and on week weekends. Outside of Eastern Standard Time office hours, it was impossible to get any decision at all. U.S. officer recalls that General Felipe Moulion, the French commander of the UN Pro 4 in Bosnia, was frustrated dealing with Zagreb in New York. When he called New York on the weekends, there was nobody there to answer his questions. And so many DPKO officials had never been in a war zone. Bureaucrats did not make good commanding officers. The U.S. officer adds, you have to talk to somebody who understands where you are in the operation, operational environment. You need people with experience. If you are a military guy explaining something to a non-military guy who has never been here and only understands things remotely, the culture of bureaucracy means he has little to gain by making a decision that may turn out badly. Better not to make a decision. So we go to now get into why the UN did not prevent the Serbs from setting up concentration camps. In summer 1992, UN Pro 4 neither prevented the Serbs setting up a network of concentration camps across northern Bosnia 
where men were starved and battered to death and women raped until their bodies gave out, nor forced them to be closed. The media, nor not the United Nations, revealed the existence of the Serb camps in early August. Information about Serb atrocities in the camps had trickled out into both Western capitals and various UN departments for several months earlier, but several months earlier, but was ignored or suppressed, according to Roy Gutman, an American journalist who won, Pulitz, won a Pulitzer Prize for his coverage of the camps. As the news broke, Mohammed Mo Sakhabi, Bosnia's ambassador to the United Nations, was given copies of two UN memo memos written in April and May detailing reports of Serb atrocities. When Sakhabi held a news conference about the memos, Merrimack Golding asked him how he had obtained them. Sakhabi, in turn, demanded to know why the information had, ne had never been made public. An, uh, an official leader admitted that the information had been released, says Sakhabi, only to the secretary co council members that needed to know. A television footage of stick thin prisoners starving behind barbed wire triggered a wave of revulsion around the world. And so we're going to get into that in the next and oh, let's let's do this. Yeah. So the television footage of sick thin prisoners starving behind barbed wire were triggered a wave a revulsion around the world. In response, the Security Council passed Resolution 770 on August 13th, demanding that the Red Cross have access to the camps. Resolution 770 involved Chapter 7 of the UN Charter, known as the Enforcement Clause, which provides for potential military action and was used as a justification for liberating Kuwait. Resolution 770 called on member states to take all measures necessary to facilitate, although not ensure, the delivery of relief supplies. Resolution 771 passed the same day also seemed to point towards the possibility of an inter intervention calling for all sides to submit information to the Council about breaches of international law. The resolutions were not a direct mandate for a coalition of the willing to liberate. Serb occupied Bosnia, but there was sufficient scope for military action against the Serbs. David Owens agreed. I wrote a strong letter to the British Prime Minister, John Major, arguing for military action to use air power to in interdict the Serb supply lines to the concentration camps. I have never changed my view. I always believed we should have used more force to implement the three peace plans. Advanced Owen Peace Plan, EU Action Plan, and the Contact Group Map. There was no military response. The Serbs closed the camps, but the war continued. And we'll pick that up uh, to, uh, on Monday. On how the UN failed to implement Resolution 770 and 771. And um, again, please get this book by Adam Abor. Um, and uh, if you cannot get the book or you are, remember you can get a free account at internetarchive.org and rent this book for free and read it online for free. I highly suggest you do so. If you and can't get the book where you are in the world, please share the link to the Internet Archive where you can read it for free so that others can read and know the information in this book. This is Order Militaris Video TV signing off. Day of Smoke.